Hey, hey, hey. Hope everybody's doing good. Carl Bryan coming at you with my boy, our boy, Kenya Pat. Kenya Pat, what's <laughs> happening, bud? Oh, plowing away. And it's kind of fun. We're, um, I think we're probably in the last month of this really big five month project we've been doing on this. All yep. secret still, things are coming, but uh, I think we're in our last <laughs> month before bringing out to beta test. So the, I'm excited to get down to the finish line. When do you think beta? When do you think it's going to, let's give us an approximate date here. Uh, let's say um, three weeks, maybe. Oh, three. oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, possibly so three mid where are we here april so that's mid-may yeah yeah well, cool. you know, second cool, week of may cool. perhaps not sticking to it but uh you see <laughs> how kelvin does he's we had to drag him aside to um we're actually redoing the 100k training and it should be live in a day or two um and certainly by monday but um yeah it's we're just improving the whole user experience let's just say so all righty, there we go. We got everybody whistle nice and wet. Speaking of which, okay, guys, so this is a and a call. As I always say, you guys provide the Q, we provide the A. Need a few questions. Have you got a question? Raise your hand. Um, or again, you can just type it in the box and we can read it out if you so choose. Um, but in the meantime, why don't we open up a couple lines and say hello. Who's at the top here? Amanda. Amanda Bettel. We're coming to say hello to Amanda. Amanda, you are live. Hey, hey. Ha. Amanda Bedell. And Bedell. I guess I'm always at the top. <laughs> there you go. Right. Um, a goes to the top. That's it. If your name was Aaron. Xander, you'd you'd be you'd be last on the list, Amanda. So there you there go. That you might go. be a hack I for know. next call. How's it going? Uh -huh. What's happening, there you Amanda? Go. Um, not much. I, I'm just getting started here. So I don't quite have a question. Uh, I just got <laughs> access to my um, software. So I've been digging in there looking at the resources and have a meeting with my attorney to go over contracts, etc. But I just love all of the resources. It's been amazing. Beautiful. But a fire hose, of course. A little that. bit, yes. This is it. In fact, I'm writing an email right before this call on a little bit of that, where it's a little bit of order chaos theory. And it's like metaphor that I've given, which I'm going to give away my email for tomorrow. But anyways, unless I change my mind, of course, which has happened. But tomorrow, it's like, you you know, you, you make your bed. It goes into chaos big time before it gets made, right? Um, and therefore, so when you take on something new, you're going to elevate. You've just got to expect that you're going to go to chaos. And then also your coaching clients, as you take them on, you're going to be stretching their, you know, perception of what is and is not possible and whatnot and pushing them a little bit. So you got to help them. You got to say, look, we're going to, you know, when we get in between those ears and we start changing things, it's going to be like stripping the bed. So don't surprised when you get overwhelmed and don't get surprised when you get a little bit you know like oh is this right i'm a bit nervous and yada 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 so anyway that's what you're experiencing no doubt you realize that uh -huh. but totally natural and uh just keep pounding away and you will do just fine you will do just fine as will everybody else what do you think totally yeah i mean i am a business consultant already so i just love this the software in that monetizing what I, you know, kind of showing people what we can do for them. And I've been kind of dripping the language in yep. my conversations and uh, with the clients I already have. So it's, it's, it's been fun, but it is definitely uh, for them, you know, seeing me kind of transition my language. They're like, whoa, what? Um, mm -hmm. For instance, doing uh, the Sorry, there's construction around me, so I'm distracted. Uh, but for <laughs> instance, doing uh, the financial um, outlay and yep. the profit margins was a huge aha for someone. I didn't think about it because I knew how to build profit margins. And it's that, you know, you do your cost 
and then uh, you know, typically people will just do, oh, I want a 40% profit margin. So they'll do times 40%, right? Yep. No, wait, hold on a second. <laughs> no, <Yep. laughs> you need to be doing 60%. So that was a huge aha moment for one of my clients. Uh, he did not think of it in that way. And I had already known that. So I didn't think about teaching it. But that's something that came out of of the lesson. So thank yeah. you. Right. Actually, so, you want me to, I, I love it. And high five. Ironically, I had a call uh, this morning, actually a guy named Mike Hartman, who won a Stanley Cup with the New York Rangers. So if there's any hockey fans, that's like really yeah. impressive. But anyways, um, so I was chatting to him and this is what so a, a similar, but a little bit different the way the conversation went where, you know, he's got an online course and he wants to sell X amount of memberships and, you know, a million here and a million there. And just, you know, and, and he's a very smart and astute guy. No doubt he's going to do some cool things. But I basically just said, I said, I said, Mike, stop. Like, I got me on the phone, man. You want me to help? Um, I'm, I'm going to help, right? Give me your business model, right? Like, I want to understand what you do from, you know, from lead um, to client and then upsell. Walk me through a one, two, three, four, five if you have it. And the bottom line in the conversation was very straightforward and it often is where I said, stop, stop. You know, again, he was explaining. He was doing a great job, but I just, it was, you know what I mean? I was like, let me see if this will help. What do I buy from you for $10,000? Did he have hmm. an answer? No. And then I said, by the way, you, you've said no to that. So I know the answer to the next question. But if you said yes to this, this is my next question. What do I buy from you for 25 grand? Right? So one question, what do I buy for 10 grand? Often you're going to find they don't have it. Think of the chiropractor. He doesn't have a $10,000 unit of sale. There's, therefore, he can't sell one. And of course, he thinks that he can't sell a $10,000 unit of sale, which would be categorically incorrect. Um, so it's $10,000, it's $25,000. And then the next one, and then this isn't just for you, but this is for the benefit of everybody listening. Um, I said three words. I said, do you have a pen? Do you have a piece of paper? He goes, yes. I go, write down these three words. Um, Pat knows probably what I'm exactly what I'm about to say. Recurring revenue bundle. Right. Tell me what you have, like, explain to me your recurring yeah. revenue, bun your bundle. Um, and again, you know, and, and then not only then if you have a recurring revenue bundle, then I say, I want to see your offer stack. And for some that may or may not know what I mean by an offer stack, just basically just think of a PowerPoint slide. And like, there's 10 things that you get, or, you know, four things, 10 things, 12 things that they get when they work with you. That's and as you open them up, the twelve, um, you know, lines on the PowerPoint, you go click, 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 click twelve times, and then twelve items pop up. That's the way you get a ten thousand dollar deal done. So, so, anyways, along the same lines, Amanda, but real simple for you and everybody listening. What do I buy from you for ten grand? Do or do not have an answer. What do I buy from you for twenty five grand? Do or do not have an answer. And then third, and it should be a recurring revenue bundle. And if you're wondering, like, and again, if that's no doubt, it's pretty straightforward for some of us and others, it might be a little bit newer. Just look at what you bought from us. And that is a recurring revenue bundle, right? Offer stack. Here's where you get, you get the book, you get the website, you get the software. We train you on a hundred thousand dollars in 45 minutes. We give you a one-to-one -one coach, a kick in the pants, the community, the Facebook group. That's our offer stack, bingo, bingo, bongo. So does that help, Amanda? Does that expand anything like what you did today? It totally does. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. And yeah, that, can, that, that, that question, I'd tell you, my conversation today when I just said that, what do I buy from you for 10 grand? It was a little bit of a needle mover. We ended up chatting about that for a while. So for some of you, that might help. Uh, Pat, can I ask you, would you expand upon anything I just said or that Amanda said, or would you? agree chime in what would you say well i like the idea of what you said 25 grand um <clears throat> 10 grand 25 grand i think we're we all need to start thinking in that direction of there's always clients who there's always people who fly first class on airlines and it's yep. not usually me and there's <laughs> always people who want a first class experience and so yep. you want to go out and think okay so whatever we're doing what can we do like what is our twenty five thousand dollar package there's yeah. always going to be someone you would think at least that yeah. um, will want the $25,000 package you offer. <clears throat> and that's not yep. $25,000 over a year 
uh, you know, because that's just a basic coaching package. That could be $25,000 over a weekend or something. I don't know. But yep. uh, something we could think about and brainstorm. Yeah, through. exactly. Actually, and guys, if you want an example of this from a fabulous company that you could learn so much um, when you look at the software and whatnot, think of McDonald's. But what do they say? Instead of selling a first class flight, what they do is say, do you want me to supersize that? Right. That, that's basically their their version of that. And some people just like to spend more. And actually, I just want to expand upon what Amanda Amanda said. Like, it's also so it's not just 10 grand and 25 grand, because if you have a ten thousand dollar package, I'd say, OK, that's great. Now, tell me what goes into it. And my head would automatically go to profit margin. Right. Because, again, you you do you could have a ten thousand dollar unit of sale and lose a grand. You could have a ten thousand dollar unit of sale and only make a thousand. If it was like think of supplements and like you know if there's hard costs, you've also I, I would encourage you to be thinking about um, the profit margin because remember you're a business coach. You charge two grand a month, twenty four grand a year. Your job at an elementary level, as a base level, is to make sure if I'm your client, you put twenty four grand into my bank account, you know, in short order. And at a minimum, you put $48,000 in my bank account over the 12 months to make sure that I doubled my money because everybody looking to get into Bitcoin right now at $60,000 or whatever it is, it gets to 120 and everybody's excited about doubling their money. Well, that's what we do as business coaches. So anyways, I love it. Amanda, brand new to us, providing some fabulous content and advice. All right, where are we going here? Pat, Diana. Oh, okay, she's got a great question. Okay, Diana, let's open you up. Diana. Hi there. 25 year smoker. Who can help me? <laughs> ha 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 ha. You're going to get sick of that one, Diana? Diana is a hypnotist for everybody sell. listening. She helps people with that kind of stuff. Diana, you got a good question? Hit me. Uh, I have a few questions if you have time. Uh, I do, Kyrie sure. Fox are going to be one of my main uh, people that I reach because as a hypnotherapist, I, I talk to a lot of them anyway, but what would they sell for $25,000? I'm not sure I could even come up with yeah. 10. 20, well, okay. For do a little bit of homework after we hang up, you're going to see them there um, okay. at a minimum, start with five before you go to remember the first one was 10 um, and then 25. Right. So again, look here, let's just go problem, solution, problem, solution. Remember, don't look for ideas. You change your spidey senses to look for problems and then create solutions. And this is how you build a, you know, a robot. That's how you build a kick butt business. The problem for the chiropractor is I get a sore back. I go to the chiropractor. He fixes me up. I get short term relief and I don't come back. Okay. The same, the dentist, you go to the dentist, you get your teeth clean. He says, you got to come back in six months and you go, I'll call you for sure. I'm going to really get on this. I'm never not going to get my teeth cleaned in six months. Guess what? 18 months later, you come back to the dentist, right? So basically the chiropractor, he does a once a week back talk. And he, if he has like a back room of some description, he does a once a, uh, once a week back talk. That becomes part of the bundle. He doesn't sell you. Again, the problem with the chiropractor is he has a pay as you go model. And he's forever frustrated. No more pay as you go. It's a $5,000 package and you get X number of visits. Um, and we are going to see you to the point because he, how does he sell it? He explains to the client that you are, gonna, you are here and you have a bad back and there's your x-ray. Um, he's got to use a little bit of a story. Actually, maybe I'll give you one in a minute. He's got to give a little bit of a story and he's got to have that offer stack where you get back talk, you get X amount of um you know, X amount of treatments and he disrupts you a little bit um, with here's what's going to happen. You're going to get short term relief. I'm not going to see you and you're going to be back here in three years. But that damage I might you might have to think about surgery and you might have to think about X, Y, Z. So so that's the way he does it. He's got a stretching regime. You know, he could again, a massage therapist. If you, in, if you open up, there's a chiropractor on this call right now. I open him up and I say, uh, three words describe massage therapist. He says pain in ass, right? What the, the chiropractor doesn't realize is the massage. If I was a chiropractor, um, what would I do? I would have a massage therapist. Um, I would run ads no less than 10 at any one time. What would it say? Free massage, couples massage, Swedish massage, 
um, sports massage, blah, 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 and two for one, couples massage, whatever it would be, I would have ads running for massage running all the time. Why? You would love a massage, I bet, Diana, but you, can't, you couldn't be asked to go to the chiropractor. So I advertised massage and then I would upsell you into chiropractic, right? Uh -huh. How do we do that? Now the massage therapist has to have a story. Okay, so I actually did this example on a webinar. So let me just walk you through this. I'm covering a bit of territory here. I wanna make sure a chiropractor needs a 5,000 plus unit of sale. Okay, again, 10,000 is better than five. I'd run ads, the free massage. They would come in for the free massage. I would accept that only three in 10 people are gonna get upstairs. How do we get them up? And hopefully better, but three in 10 will, will create a profitable model. How do we get them upstairs? She tells a story, and what does every story have in what What does every good story have in common? Conflict, okay? Episode of Seinfeld, episode of Breaking Bad, any movie, no conflict, no movie, no show, nobody's tuning in next week. What's the conflict? I'll t let me tell you a quick little story while you're here getting a massage about a guy named Jim McMahon. 1985 won a Super Bowl with the Chicago Bears. Not sure if you know about his story. Very popular guy. His popularity would make Tom Brady look like a little bit of a lightweight today. Okay, sunglasses and all that stuff. He was a huge hit. Again, Super Bowl champion on um, Super Bowl champion 1985. Chicago Bears, the number one team. Well, he has early onset dementia. Why? He's been get hit in the head um, for his entire career, so they automatically assume that he had some problem. Like what do they call that? CTE. This sort of thing going on. Well, guess what? He went in to go see a chiropractor. The chiropractor grabbed his neck, twisted it where nobody else had done. And basically he said it felt like a toilet flushing. And what actually happened is it wasn't his head. It was actually his neck. And because it was so badly messed up, he wasn't getting the proper amount of oxygen through his body to his brain. This is a true story, by the way, right? Well, guess what? He had early onset dementia. So he, they can't turn around the damage that was done um, is it anyways, he, they can't turn around the damage that was done, but there is no more damage happening, right? So here's my question, Dave, in the free massage chair. Have you ever felt a little bit lethargic when you felt like you shouldn't feel lethargic? Or have you ever felt tired when you felt like you shouldn't have felt tired? Guess what? Nine of 10 people sitting on that chair, if not 10 out of 10, are going to say, yeah. Say, well, here, let me do this. Let me send you upstairs, the Willie, the chiropractor. He'll do a little bit of a, uh, an exam. We'll get some x-rays done and let's have a look at, we can help you out. Boom. Um, free ad, free like ad, sorry, the free massage for massage, the chiropractor. And what does the chiropractor sell? Not a pay as you go model. He needs a five to $10,000 unit of sale. And I know chiropractors that have a $25,000 unit of sale. So, and, but are they, if you, Introduce me to a, a chiropractor who has a pay-as-you-go model. Are we going to get them to a $25,000 unit of sales straight away? No, you, you need, you know, step them up towards it. But, but that's what they do, just like a business coach. You open up a business coach. There's probably one here. Before they met us, they were $150 an hour, right? I talk to that coach, and I say, you are going to do one of two things. You're going to go broke, or you're going to burn out. You, if you hang up the phone, I don't care if you buy from us or you don't buy from us, you have to be a monthly fee, $1,000 if you're newish, $2,000 a month if you're, you know, a business coach, and we want to move you to, you know, $3,000 a month, 36 grand a year is totally acceptable, provided you're good at what you do. That's how we help a business coach. But you need an offer stack to get it done. That's why we provide that for you. So how do I, I get it? Does that help? It does. How do I get the offer stack for the ten and the fifteen thousand? For what? The chiropractor? The chiropractor. Go and do a little bit of homework. You're gonna see them all over the place. There's if you just Google it, ten thousand dollar chiropractic um program, it probably something would pop straight up for you. Huh. Okay. That's how but just think look look at what we what are some of the things that you think that a chiropractor could include? A chiropractor's job is what? Not to fix your back, to fix your health, right? Mm -hmm. So meditation classes fit? Yes. Yoga classes fit? Yes. Massage fit? Yes. Um, <clears throat> did I say stretching? Stretching routine and a 
And what about take home notes to show you all the stretching routines, right? With, with everything's laid out and it's a binder that I flip through because I've got a sciatic nerve issue and Pat's got a bad neck from years of football. We got to go to different pages on the, he's doing different stretches than I am. Supplements. Yes. You know, all that kind of, it's just, it's pretty simple. By the way, pretend I just said personal trainer. It's uh, yoga. Yes. Meditation. Yes. Um, if, if I was a personal trainer, I would go buy um, like a bunch of, what do you, like treadmills, but really kick butt treadmills that they couldn't otherwise probably just get. So think like Bowflex. When you were paying me, I'd put you on $1,000 a month. I wouldn't be pay as you go. You'd be $1,000 a month. I would bring in my treadmill, my specific treadmill. And Pat was my client. I'd drop it in his basement in front of his TV or in his gym. Um, and part of our $1,000 relationship is that I'm going to leave that treadmill with him because I'm, I'm coming Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday, or yeah, Monday, what do I say? Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I want to make sure on Tuesday and Thursday, he's also working out on the treadmill. And now guess what? I have to come and pick up my treadmill. He keeps paying $1,000 a month. And when he says, uncle, I come take my treadmill away. And then he's like, yeah, but I like the treadmill. So he keeps paying $1,000 a month for significantly longer than he otherwise would. Hmm. Okay. Help? Yes. Make sense? Uh-huh. Yeah, just, the way we got there, and I know this, like I'm covering mm -hmm. probably a lot of ground for somebody, not for you, Diana, but somebody might have a little bit less experience. Just answer me this. What do I buy from you for $10,000? I don't care what it is. And then go to an offer stack. And if you want an example, you know, we create an offer stack for you guys as part of your marketing assets that we create. And then also think of what you bought from us. We have a 12th, you know, we, our program is, you know, it's one to $2,000 a month. Right? So do you so, have those ideas yeah. in, in the free talk? And, and I'm still a little unclear as to what happens when, like, do they watch the video on our website first and then they do the... Uh, PAS and or or doesn't it matter whether or not they watch the video or do they watch it after or <laughs> hey, you're asking okay so you're going to meet a the chiropractor how are you going to get them to become a client yeah yeah you, okay basically you want them to watch a video if they won't watch the video they're going to be a terrible twenty four thousand dollar client generally speaking right so a fifteen minute call to a one and a half hour PAS in the middle of those two calls, you give them homework. And part of that homework is you watch the video, which yeah. is the exact process everybody on this line followed with us. Yeah. Same process. Okay. Education. It's lead, education, um, then the consultation, the PAS, and then you close them. And can I ask one more question? You may. When um, I was studying one of the things, that it was the 100K, and they talked about um, if we don't get you 300% at the second month, then it's free. How often does that happen? Or is that just easy peasy, we get that for them? I'm sorry, can you ask me that question again? Sorry. Well, I think it was in the 100K training. He talked about telling the client, look, the prospect, not the client. If we don't yeah. get you 300%, um, you know, extra profit in the next two months, then the coaching is free. So does that, is that just like almost it's, a sure thing or is that something the, where we miss the mark? No, it, here's the magic is that it's just, it's on an annualized basis, right? So like if you're a thousand dollars a month, you got to put three grand in better bank account. You know what I mean? Like it's a, it's, it's, it's a straight, because you know, it's, it's annualized. It's not, we're going to put 12 grand in your bank account on the first day, you know, in the first month it's annualized. So it's really, you know, you break it down. It's a pretty easy process, but it's month. The answer is it's month to month. Um, do you know what I mean on it? But you get to annualize the numbers. So they're significantly smaller, um, than, you know what I mean? Like, it's not like 36 grand, it's a few grand. You help them with the ten thousand dollar unit of sale I just described. You do that falling off a log. They get two sales per year. You you did your job, but do fifty sales per year and have them refer all their friends. I think he was talking about a three hundred percent increase in 
either profits or revenue by yeah, the it's going to be revenue. Now. It's going to be. What, okay. Pat, do you know? Am I, Pat, can you? Yeah. Okay, you know, so let's, here? For example, I think, um, let's say, for example, if the fee is $1,000 a month for coaching, then you'd want to get the client $3,000 in increased profits. You have to find in that month, you're charging a thousand, you got to find them $3,000. So to find them $3,000, um, as Carl said, it's annualized. So you'd have to find them, what is that? It's $250 a month of recurring revenue <clears throat> for them to get $3,000 that year. Now in the second month, you charge them another thousand dollars you'd find them another $250 a month, which is another $3,000 a year. That's how it works. Okay. So, I see. yeah, it's quite easy to do. Um, uh, Diana, let me also comment on the chiropractor because um, I was just thinking of, I've been going to chiropractors my whole life, but in the last 12 years, my family spent approximately $43,000 on a chiropractor. <laughs> and so we have- Who's counting? <laughs> 43,200. And 56 so cents. That's give or take. Now, but the way the chiropractor took us in as our whole family is he's like, hey, Pat, come on in, bring your whole family. I'll give you all free x-rays. And it's like, okay, so who's going to resist that? And because he understands the lifetime value of a client. And it's not going to be 43000 probably. Um, it's probably a lot less. It could, I don't know what it is, maybe 10000 or something or 5000 But he knows that his hard cost to do those x-rays might be 100 bucks or something. I don't know what it is, but it's pretty small. So what he what he's trying to do is remove the barrier to entry to get me in there as a client. He should do anything he can to get that $5,000 lifetime value to come in the door and to give away free x-rays. They're always charging for x-rays like, hey, it's 75 bucks for x-rays. It's like it doesn't make any sense because when I saw the x-rays of my kids' spines and they're a little bit off and I knew that the pain I've been suffering my whole life with bad you know, headaches and stuff from football. I thought there's no way I'm letting my kids go through the same thing. We're going to get them fixed up right away. And they actually all, they all got hooked so that they all like to go to the chiropractor. And often we went every week and sometimes twice a week, sometimes three times a week if we're in bad shape. So very, very smart idea to lower the barrier of entry, give away free x-rays, but get the parents to bring in their kids as well. Like my chiropractor, yeah. he's adjusting babies in there and the way he does it, I don't know how he does it, but yeah. all kinds of parents bring in all kinds, you know, all ages of kids. And that's a great way to uh, yep. lower the barrier of entry. Um, and the way you do it, you question. use stories, right? You use just same thing, Sage, when she was a baby, she's going to see a chiropractor. And same thing, you use stories that disrupt them, right? You Do you want your baby to have proper airflow or do you want your baby to have limited airflow? <laughs> You know what I mean? It's like, oh my gosh, I want my baby to have the maximum amount of airflow. Well, next thing you know, they're going to the chiropractor. So, sorry, Pat, what are you gonna say? Well, I was just gonna say, um, we've had a question waiting from Mike Stewart. So maybe Diana, if, we, if you have more questions, yeah. we can come nope. back to you, but. That good, does that help, Thank Diana? You. Absolutely, thank you. No worries, no buddy. Worries. Back on mute. All right, let's go to Mike. Mike. You are self-muted. I am unmuted. How's that? There you go. Hey. How's it going, Mike? What's happening? Fantastic. Doing well, thank you. Loving the program and new with it. And um, just had a question. When, when I look at the ROI in the software, it, I just want to clarify in case I'm asked the question. It looks like it does not include any of my fees on the the growth calculating no. what the return is. Is that right? No, it should actually. Um, so I'll open up my own. And you're, okay, so let's see if we can do this. Um, you'll see my screen here. We've got initial investment. Let's make this really simple to see if this works. We're going to make this at zero and we're going to make this $1,000 a month. Okay. You see that it's $12,000. I'll just save that. Um, it should update automatically. And here the ROI right here is 2398, 2398%. So that would be uh, 287,000 uh, divided by 12,000. I'll just I see if I this works. Out, here. I was looking at the top right, the total profit impact. So I think that's probably where oh, okay. I went wrong. 
Yeah, that's your ROI is right there and that's working there just fine. Perfect. Thank you. I'm glad I asked the question. That's fantastic. Yeah, that's good. Gosh. All right, Mike, did you, any other question for us, Mike? Is that it? That's all I have for now. I appreciate you being here. No worries, buddy. Okay, I'm going to put you back on mute. Let's go up here. Where are we going to go? Danette True. Sounds like a newbie. <clears throat> Danette True. Let's see if she's uh, yourself muted, Danette. Pretty cool name. Come on, Danette. Don't be shy. <laughs> He's looking Shy for the business button. coaches. Yeah, that's possible. Okay, while we're waiting for Danette, let's go to, we're in D's. Let's go to Dave McKenzie. We all love to hear from Dave. <laughs> that is a Canadian, very weird, but Dave will explain to them in a minute what just happened. Dave, you're self muted. We call him Bob and Doug. More strangeness. <laughs> Hopefully, he's going to answer so he can explain all this to those who are new with us. Come on, Dave. All right, let's keep going down the D's. Daryl, Daryl Kostyanuk. Probably messing up your last name, Daryl. Been with us a while, self-muted. There How he is, Daryl, you're live. How are you? Hey, 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 what's going on? Oh, it's going great, it's going great. Just uh, preparing some, I, I watched the uh, presentation uh, that's uh, using an example for the the training and I'm just developing some slides uh, based on what it was used. It's, it's, Great idea. Great idea. Fantastic. Yeah. So, Sorry, I want to let everybody can hear. What's the great idea? With the, what's well, the great the, idea? The, I can't remember the gentleman's name that uh, he's, you guys use him as an example for the PAS training. And, oh, okay. Uh, and uh, he, he used some examples. One was the, uh, I think, the event chain, which was really, really slick. I haven't tried that. So I'm going to do some of that stuff myself and implement that, too, in my PAS uh, presentations. Yeah, Pat, you're going to show us where that is so everybody knows what we're talking about here? Well, I think yes. Uh, I can't remember the name. He was on uh, a couple weeks ago. I think it it's Billy. Is it, was it Billy Dixon? Oh, it is it Billy? Billy? It was Billy. That's right. It was Billy. That's right. Correct. Yeah. Okay. So this would be on the role play. play. It was excellent. I, uh, I thought that was just fantastic. Yeah. Okay. So everybody wants to know what Daryl's talking about. Here it is. You just go to our domain name, no results dash no fee dot yep. com forward slash role play and there's a video there where it's yes. uh, billy and holly doing a bit of a and by the way you guys should all anybody got some newbies here um guys this role play is something that anybody who's done it will will open them up and they'll be absolutely raving uh look it cost it's 197 dollars for three um three appointments uh but if we go by what everybody tells us you should jump all over it just a little fyi but what Daryl was talking about is right there on the role play. You don't need to do anything. You don't need to pay anybody anything. You just go there and the the video is waiting for you. So there it yeah. is. Yeah, Billy, cool. the, he was excellent. He was phenomenal, actually. I was so impressed. <laughs> awesome. So what else is going on? Give us either the good word or another question or what's the, you got the floor. Oh, I don't know. I didn't really have a question. I was kind of surprised that you called on me there, Carl. So uh, <laughs> I was really focused on doing some, you know, preparing some of the presentation stuff for myself here. And I said, whoa, what? Did I raise my hand? I didn't. You know. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're just unlucky enough to have D. I was on the D's. I went to that and I went Dave and then there's Daryl. So there you go. After we already had Diana, we got lots of. Yeah. Uh, just trying going to down the D's. Up. Anyway. Yeah. Just trying to keep my stick on the ice. That's all. Yeah, I'll stick on. There you go. Boom. The old Canadian metaphor. Well done, shoots. Well done. Awesome, Daryl. Okay, appreciate you, bud. Yeah, Are you a you hockey guy, by the way? I'm sorry? Are you a hockey guy? Oh, absolutely. Still play. Is that right? But who's your who's gonna win the cup? Who's gonna win the cup? We're gonna this is being recorded. Yeah, uh, gee, I don't know. Um, <laughs> um, there's, a, there's a couple teams that are surprising. Um, kind of um, really, really bending a little bit towards Colorado because I like McKinnon. Yeah. And, yeah, uh, McKinnon's a stud. Love yeah, him. He's, he is. And uh, Tampa Bay still got a really, really strong team. Um, yeah. I watched. I watched a little bit yesterday the Edmonton game and that Connor McDavid is just unbelievable. Uh, Connor, Connor, yeah. McDavid. Connor McDavid. He is. As you mentioned, Tampa Bay. There's a couple. Um, They've got two players, uh, uh, Cal Foote. He used to play here. We live in Kelowna. So the, he used to play for the Kelowna Rockets. He's been to my house a couple, a uh, few times. 
And awesome. uh, he's playing in the show there. And actually, his dad was Adam Foot, who was yep. I don't know, won a couple cups with uh, with the Avalanche. There you go. And then his little brother, he's not very little, he's six four, big kid, um, Nolan Foot. And uh, actually, you know, you know what? He got traded. He's uh, where is he? He got traded. Anyway, he got drafted as well from Tampa. Um, but anyway, so there you go. So yeah, Tampa, they're they're looking the goods, no question, no question. But I'm a Toronto guy. So I'm going with Toronto, and I went with Toronto last year and the year before, and I'll go for them next year. So that's my bet. And last time they won is 1968, so I'm not doing very good. Yeah, I watched that game, uh, Bobby Bond. I, I pulled a Bobby Bond. So, uh, you know, play play shift with a broken leg. I played a leg. game with a broken leg. There you go. That's right. He did. Broken leg. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. There you go. You saw that? Uh, I, mean, I was 10 years old when I watched that, so uh, oh. I'm, I'm an old part. So I remember watching the go. last time they reached the cup, yeah. yeah. I love it. Oh, my gosh. Well, there you go. All right, high five. Okay, awesome. Gary, I appreciate Thank having you. you on board, bud. You're welcome very much. Thank you. Okay, here we go. Okay, Danette is – Danette, here she's coming alive. Danette True, very cool name, very cool name. Come on. Yeah, so Danette, you just got to um, – Pat, you know where she unmutes from? I think she just kind of. Well, it should be a microphone know. icon if you click, and I think that's. I mean, I've never really seen the go to meeting from the other side of the angle. <laughs> yeah. So I'm not. Sure. Yeah. It's, I think it's. Anyway, it's all good. Don't worry, Danette. We'll we'll work <clears throat> it out. Surprised, I don't know. I have done it many a times, but I just can't think of how to do it there. So, anyways. So. Carl, I think actually on the left hand side, you should be able to see your name there on the left hand side. There's a microphone. Yeah, if you just click on that, you should uh, you should be unmuted, Danette. But, but no big deal. We'll keep moving. And sorry, Pat, did you have a question? Something to say? Well, two things. Diana was saying there's a control panel on the upper right usually. But I was going to say. Um, the first little trivia, the first time I went to a hockey game, I watched Bobby Orr in Toronto beat. Oh, Leafs. no. Really? Oh, wow. There we go. Holy cow. There we go. Not bad for your <laughs> first game. You fell asleep. Yeah, exactly. You would have been a little tacker. So I love that. I was nine years old. Yep. Yeah, I grew I up in cool. Calgary. So we, you know, so Wayne, so Wayne Gretzky, no, but everybody's heard of him. Like I've seen Wayne Gretzky play live. And of course, I didn't like him because I was a Calgary fan. <laughs> so we were booing him, oh, not realizing yeah. that one day we're all going to want to be able to say that we saw him play. So there you go. There you yeah. go. Cool. <clears throat> all right. Cool. Well, anyway, um, all right. We got to keep moving here. Where are we going to go? Where, where should we go here, Pat? Or do you want to show us something? Or what are we doing? Uh, no, practice? I don't have anything to show. We're just plugging away on uh, sort of long term big projects, and hopefully, they'll be. Hopefully next week, maybe even Thursday, what? we'll have something to show. But um, if I could, you know what? Though, but some of the folks are new, and I want to make sure. I just I think there's a lot of functionality when I'm like, sure. could we just zip into the software here quick? And guys, just pay yeah, pay absolutely. attention to Pat's screen if you could for a sec. Yeah, can you just whip us through um, one, uh, an assessment and kind of do your magic there on the new update? Yeah, I'll do I can do this awesome updates. Sure. So um, yeah, I mean the main thing is. Um, before I do this, just realize here on the left that you have a training icon. And this will look different in a couple days. <clears throat> You'll see a button that, sa that says Profit Acceleration Software Training at the top. You'll click on that and you'll come into this page. Um, and then we might have the 100K training on the other side here, but we'll have those ready for you there. <clears throat> so uh, you'll come to this page and I just encourage you to watch a video and then go back in the software and actually do it. Don't just watch all the videos at a time because you'll get a little overwhelmed. Just go back and forth, watch a video and do it. So basically you set up, click this new company button to set up a company and click a new assessment to set up an assessment. So I'll do this uh, briefly. I'll just put it under this already existing XYZ daycare. I want to set up a profit jumpstart 12. I'll use Australian dollars because it's the same dollar symbol as the other dollars. And I'll name it, um, let's call this uh, something that you can remember and it makes sense. So profit jumpstart for XYZ daycare, April, if I could spell, April 20th. 
And then even the year, because you're going to come back in a year or so and go, what year was that? When did I do that? So that would be a really good descriptive name. And then, because if you come to this list and you say, which one was that? And you can come and say, that's exactly who I did this for. So you click on that. The first thing you'll do, now as you're talking to a client, um, you might get to know them a little bit with some introduction questions. But um, right away, you're going to start with your, their financials. You say, I need you know, three numbers from you. What your, what's your cur uh, company's current annual revenue? So we plug in whatever it is, say it's a million dollars. What's the company's current net profit margin? If you don't know what that means, you can ask these little, or just click these little buttons here, um, and it'll tell you what it means. So the net profit margin will always be smaller than the gross profit margin. A lot of coaches are getting this backwards, so just remember net is smaller. Um, if you're still confused, do the financial training. That'll help you. You really need to know it, and uh, we're actually creating some quizzes around it, so you have to know it. And just a little side note on this, Carl. Um, I've made some quizzes with some case studies. So, for example, and most of the quiz questions are really easy. Like, if you paid any attention to the training, you'll get them. But some you've got to think. For example, you know, company has a million dollars annual revenue. The net profit margin is 20%. Gross profit margin is 50%. What's their break-even point um, if they have a thousand customers who are Canadian and it's winter? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not joking. So <laughs> there's some relevant data in there, and there's some irrelevant data. And the thing is, this is really a, a a scenario that you're going to get asked by people. They're going to say, what's my break even point? You know, I've got all these customers and you know, some of them live in Saskatchewan or whatever. And so you have to know how to figure out break even point. So don't just make the wrong answer and go, oh, I got it wrong, but figure out how to do it and go through the training because your clients are going to ask you these questions. So anyway, um, what industry, if you don't know the industry, if it's not in the list, uh, you can put other and do some research and figure out what the net profit margin is and gross profit margin for that industry. So maybe I'll just do uh, 20 and 40 and that's fine. It only shows up in the cut costs. Um, that's the only place it shows up. So now you see these uh, graphs start to appear, still phased out there. Um, they'll be phased out or a little blurred out until we do valuation. But I would do that first and I'd show the client, hey, here's your numbers up here and we're gonna go and hunt for some profit. The next thing I'd do right away, I'd go to market dominating position. So you're gonna click the link on the left. You have notes to coach. Uh, when you're here, you should not be showing this screen to a client. So let's say you're on, you're on the summary page. You, sh you have this, you're gonna freeze your screen and I have a pause button on my screen here. So what I would do next is I would say, hey, Carl, you know, you might be unique, but it's not gonna matter to your prospects unless it's a hot button issue for them. And a market dominating position is basically a USP or a unique selling proposition, or it's a distinctive advantage targeting the hot buttons of your market. And, you know, this is the foundational element of marketing. So Carl, what benefits do you, as a chiropractor, Carl, what benefits do you <laughs> offer to your target market that separates you from all your competitors? And then Carl's going to answer that question. We don't have to go through it now. And I'll say, Carl, are those benefits based on the hot buttons of your prospects? You know, the problems they have, but they don't want, and the result they want, but they don't have? And he gives an answer. So I say, Carl, if we could create a market-dominating position that addresses both the problems of your clients and the results you provide, by what percent would that Im impact your business? Carl's like, man, that would be what, 50%, 100%? And I would say, let's be really conservative. Um, they go, well, at least 10 or 20%. So I'm just going to put, you're not seeing what I'm doing. And that's the whole idea. It's like, okay, so if I were to walk through your business, Carl, and ask your employees what your market dominating position is, to what degree would I get the same answer? It's like, oh, they don't know anything, you know, blah, blah, blah. So if, Carl, if we could articulate your unique benefit in a single sentence and have you and your staff use it when speaking with profits, by what percent would that impact your business? And he goes, well, maybe another 10, 20%. I go, well, let's just go with 10. 
Or I might say, let's be really conservative. It goes, well, easy five, easy five. So I do that. And I'm going to come back to my summary screen and I'm going to unpause it. And you can see now, can you see it, Carl? Yep. Okay, so you see now that I've asked all these questions and hopefully I've sounded like a genius because I'm asking them the, some brilliant questions. And obviously if you're in a real coaching situation, you might elaborate on that some more. You might give some examples. You might bring in some slides of what it might look like for someone. But then you're gonna come back to the screen and you say, look, Carl, you know, just for those two areas, it's 15% increase. That's $150,000 of increased revenue. And with your gross profit margin of 50%, that's the $75,000 impact in your uh, profits. So that's a 38% increase in profits. That's amazing, isn't it? So now what we do, it's like, I wonder how that impacts your valuation. Because I mean, someday, you, well, maybe Carl, you said you wanted to sell. So we go through this and we're going to just ask these questions through here and we're going to input the answers. And when we do that, we'll come back to the summary screen and we'll see these graphs update uh, on the right here. So then I go and hunt for some more. And after I've done two or three, I'd say, um, Carl, would, would you like me to help you implement this? And so that's kind of the, the profit jumpstart. It's, it's just designed to find immediate impact and close a sale. And so they might say, yeah, I'd love to see it. You know, what does that look like? Um, you could take them to ROI or you could take them to the priorities and see what, um, what it looks like across the side here, across the top. That's the basic functionality of it. I might, what I do is I've got market dominating position. I'll just put a number in there so we can show the implementation calendar. It only shows one there. It doesn't even look very impressive. So I think we better find something else. You know what? Let me just go back to. Go to uh, an existing daycare. Process. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. Boom. So now we've got priorities. And down the side here, I've just put these random numbers. Some people have asked, like, how long does it take to implement? And that's really based on your wisdom and your experience. As a general rule, I would say six to eight weeks on something. So if you imagine and you go here to implementation calendar, you can click on this link here or you can click on this tab, either one, and you're gonna find this implementation calendar here, these answers at the back of the book. So you can walk through this and you see all these steps you have to do. Now, um, if you would think, how long would it take to do this? Well, this one, review the results, that's going to take you three or four minutes, five minutes tops. You want to increase the client's understanding. There's some typo in there. It looks like it's picked up some code in there, but increase their understanding of the power of a market dominating position. But, you know, that's going to take two or three, four or five minutes maybe. And then you think, dive deeper with the research. Well, who's going to do this research? If you're going to do it, you're consulting. If you're going to advise them to do it, you're coaching. It might be a hybrid model. But you know, that research might take you a week, two weeks, four hours. I don't know. Depends how much, depending on the size and the scope of the business. Brainstorming your new or their new market dominating position. This could take you a week or two. Uh, you might get it in 10 minutes, 15 minutes if you come in with an idea. But often these are not easy to find. So now you got to test it, different areas you can test it. So you can um, you can figure this out in a session perhaps and your primary test idea, you could figure that out perhaps in a session. That would be a week. Your results could go in the same session. How you're going to implement it. This might take you the same session. It might take you the next session because you got to answer all these questions. Um, how to communicate it and your test details. So now you're going to get them going on this, but you're going to want to come in and track it and see what they're doing. Every week you're going to be monitoring it. And if they've done well, you're going to establish policies and procedures around it. Now this might take yep. you six weeks, eight weeks, 12 weeks, depending on the business, the bigger the business, they'll think the longer it takes. The key is here that on the implementation calendar, 
you could do market dominating position. And as you're doing that, you could probably work on compelling offer at the same time. Um, and then you might go into something like, hey, let's find a quick hit now because this has taken a long time. We got to find them some money right away. So you might do something like cut costs earlier on, or you might do, let's increase prices, things like that. So you got to find them some quick money. But the idea is here on the implementation calendar that um, this could last. I mean, you've got a year and a half here of solid work to do. And some things take longer, some things take shorter. So anyway, that's uh, the basics of if, the software. Can, There's, may I just ahead. add a couple of things, Pat, if you don't mind, before we zip here? Yep. Um, yep. Okay, guys, if just while Pat was going through that, there's a little bit of magic that might have, you know, kind of sailed past. One of the things we say is that, like, like if you're a really smart person, you'll come up with great, let's call it great answers. A genius comes up with great questions, right? So there's, believe me, there's magic in the process when you sit with somebody and you say, well, look, so tell me about your market dominating position. And you do nothing more and nothing less than hit market dominating position. Yep, just like that and read that, you know what I mean? And you're gonna have your screen paused so they don't know that you're reading from the script. And we've got, you can do this on dual monitors. There's a few different ways you do it. If you don't know, I suggest you get together with Holly, uh, but this is gonna be paused. They don't see you reading the script, right? And when you get good at it, um, you know, you learn to, you know, if you, you read a teleprompter, first time you read it, you sound like you're reading from a teleprompter. Once you do it a few times, it's like nobody would ever know you were reading from a teleprompter, right? And not to mention, you get to, to know this stuff. So one, those questions, there's absolute magic in the process where, hey, Pat, do you have a business plan? He says, no. Oh, Pat, so if you don't have a business plan, I would assume you don't have a marketing plan. He says, no. Hey, Pat, do you have an upfront offer? Like an example, you're, you know, I mentioned earlier the chiropractor. I know you're a dentist, but you know how the chiropractor had a, um, you know, advertised some free massage, and then the cosmetic surgeon was advertising some discounted and, you know, wicked offers on Botox. Do you have the equivalent of that? Do you have a a compelling offer that people can't say no to? No. Well, what's happening is I'm slowly cutting his on when he says no, 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 no. He's sitting there and he's like, oh my goodness, like, oh gosh. And then not to mention, he's like, yeah, that's going to give a, you know, 20, 25, you know, 10, you very seldom hear a number out of their mouth less than 10%. So they're spitting out 20, 25% improvements. You water them down and say, no, look, let's just make it five. There's magic in that process, right? So A, the questions, and then B, Pat is my prospect goes, no, 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 no. He's like, what the heck's, you know what I mean? Like, I, I don't have anything going on. I wish, where was this guy? You know, where was this guy six months? That's what they'll say to you. Pat, where, or Cara, where were you six months ago? Is what Pat would say to me, right? Um, so there's that. And then can you hit uh, priorities for us, please? I'm not sure if you showed this. Um, oh, and then, and sorry, the answers at the back of the book, you guys kind of saw that. Because if you were wondering, could you just hit market dominating position for me? So if your question was, Carl, Pat, um, how, you know, like, how do we, you know, like, what are, how would you help this guy create a market dominating position? Not only these are A through K, but that's, this is the process Pat follows. This is the process I would follow. And if Adrian was on here, he'd agree with that too. So it's, that's not just sporadic, like jump around. It's A through K, right? Like it's, it's in order. So anyway, so those answers at the back of the book are following you. So when you're coaching, once again, you, you know what to ask, when to ask it, and fundamentally, and don't think that this is perfect because, you know, it's not. Um, what I mean by that is that every situation will be a little bit unique and you'll get better at it. But anyway, so that is there. Um, and just one more thing I want to show them is the settings. Could you hit priorities and then just hit the settings button? Did you do that? I think it's uh, implementation. And oh, here settings. it is. Yeah, there we go. Hit settings and now... This is basically to communicate with your client. So you just hit settings and then you'll hide settings once you're done. But meeting sequence, Pat, how, how often are we going to get together? Okay, every two weeks. What day works best for you? He says Wednesday. I go Wednesday. What time? Come up with a time. And of course, the time zone that he's in, we're going to establish that. He's in Africa. And then on, there we go. And then on the right-hand side, um, 
You'll also see the meeting reminder. So the system will automatically email your client. You might not want, if you think three days the day before and then one hour before is a little bit overkill, just do the day before and the hour before, right? But if you feel like all three and you want to, you know, really be not in their face, but you want to remind them three times instead of twice or instead of once, you just click all three buttons. So anyway, so that, that's basically there. Um, and then yeah, the and online, then, you see below, oh, that's new, right? So the online meeting, there's your link yeah. where they go. This automatically gets inserted into the email. I think in person, you're going to have the meeting address right there. And a phone meeting, you have your phone number. It automatically gets inserted into the email. That goes out. Yeah. So, so and then you save it. And, um, and you make sure I don't do this because I keep getting emails from myself to show up. <laughs> <the meeting. laughs> <laughs> and then you just hit, and then you hit hide fading settings, right? And then that disappears, and then you're back to where you were at on the implementation calendar. Anyways, I hope that helps, guys. That's just a little bit of a quick walk through. A lot of updates. If you guys saw the um, the updates that we've had over the last, you know, 12, 18 months for sure, but the next twelve months just blow you away. Um, so yeah, just a note about this. The reason I like these questions as well is. You know, I've got, in some ways, I've got a really bad memory. And I've, I used to walk into consulting coaching situations and I'd ask a few questions and then I'd walk away like, man, I should have asked that question. Why didn't I think yeah. of that? Or how does Carl come up with all these ideas about chiropractors off the cuff? And maybe you don't have a lot of ideas and maybe you don't have a lot of experience, but you can come in here and you can ask these questions and you will sound like a genius. Like I hear um, when Holly's doing role plays, and I hear the other the other person is Billy Dixon or whoever, you know, is asking questions, and I'm looking kind of over Holly's shoulder, and she's just seeing the summary screen, and this person sounds like a genius on the other side, asking these brilliant questions, and you know the client doesn't know you're reading from a script, you just sound like a brilliant genius, and this is so systematic that you just don't have to memorize questions. You just have to read the questions. It's so easy. Yeah. So there we go. I love it. And Pat always says, what go practice. practice. Like there's, this practice. is it, right? You want to be a great public speaker, you practice. You want to be a great hockey player, you practice. You want to be a great quarterback, you got to throw the ball. We would like to be able to inject your buck with some sort of a steroid that will make you amazing and be able to maneuver this thing like that. It's just not going to happen. Um, you know, get in there and uh, and work the system. So there we go. What do you think? We got, um, I just want to check here. Uh, oh, that's cool. Again, at all good. She's on Android and don't worry, you worry about that. She says, thank you. Thank you. Diana says, brilliant. Okay, it looks like we're, uh, we're good. Kenya, Pat, any parting words for our folks before we jet off? Go practice. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you, know, I'd say, you said that last week. You know, <laughs> Boring, man. We do know it's overwhelming and we know <laughs> there's a lot going on. And but it's just like soaking. You're soaking in a new culture in a sense. And like I'm here in I'm here in Kenya and I've been here what three months now. And you know, I go out in the street, I, I've got a I'm borrowing my friend's SUV who left it for me to drive, and I'm driving around these crazy streets. And I'm gone for a couple hours and I come home exhausted because it's this new culture and I'm going through roundabouts where no one pays attention and the police are just standing on the side of the road waiting to pull me over um, for no reason but to, to bribe and extort money from me. And it's a lot of stress. And when if it's like, oh, after a while, oh, I can drive quite well, thank you. And I'm not worried about the police anymore and I feel very free to move around because I'm getting used to it. But it takes time and you know i'm not going to be a a, a cultural native here um, but i'm going to be very comfortable in the culture and i think it's the same with business coaching especially if you're new to business coaching or you're new to business even it's a whole new culture um, and you just have to live in it for a while and just give yourself permission to take your time and to get comfortable and to learn the lingo and learn your way around and don't think you're going to get up and running with this in three weeks and be closing clients. You know, it no. might take you six weeks, eight weeks, 12 weeks, but you are going to close clients with it. And you are going to, I tell you, this software will cut 20 to 25 years off your experience, your need for experience, because 
you come in asking questions better than any senior executive who's been in business for 30, 40 years. They can't do this without the software. No one can do this. No one's got this. So this yeah. probably saves you 10,000 hours of work. Just And you, you'll learn the software basically in an hour and you'll learn it really well in a few weeks and that'll save you 10,000 hours, literally. So just take some time with it and get to know it and play around with it and go and do an assessment with your friend or your relative or your dog if you have to. Just ask them questions and pretend they give you an answer. So <laughs> get better. There you go. Get Rover. <laughs> Good stuff. Yeah, I just again, I started with that. Just think order chaos, guys. You're making your bed. It becomes a complete disaster, total chaos before it becomes orderly again. It's just it's the same for you as the same for Pat. It's the same for me. When we take something on new, um, you know, and, as in learning this software and understanding our system, et cetera, you, you just got to accept it. And as I said, you, your clients, when you, they take on a business coach and you're shifting, you know, you're talking to the chiropractor and he's been pay as you go for 11 years. And then you show up and tell him he needs to start selling this 10,000 or a unit of sale. And you're going to start with a 2,500, then move to a 5,000 and ultimately have these huge packages that he, and he's a terrible salesperson. He knows that this is going to be chaos, right? Like that, that's, you got to be accepting of it. So, so it's order, it's order chaos stuff, but get in there and practice folks. That's the solution. Cool beans. All right, very good. Yep. Awesome. Okay, bud. Appreciate you. Kenya, Pat, we all do, bud. And for everybody here, thanks for playing full out. And we'll see you guys on Thursday at the same time, at the same place. See you later, folks.